Clement one today's sermon titled The Miracle of Tongues and the Power of the Holy Spirit. I'm excited to dive into the Word of God with you today as we explore a fascinating topic that holds a deep significance for our faith. Today I want to take a closer look at the Greek word translated as tongue. In the original Greek, this word is a glossa, pronounced as glossa, which is listed as strong G eleven hundred. The term Glossa carries with it two primary meanings. First, it refers to the tongue, a physical member of the body and the organ of speech. Second, it refers to the language or dialect used by a particular people distinct from that of other nations. As we unpack these meanings, we'll see how the Bible uses this word in a powerful way, particularly at the context of the day of Pentecost, as recorded in the book of Acts. So, Let's open our hearts and minds to what the Lord wants to teach us today through his word. These two meanings are critical to our understanding with certain passages in the New Testament, especially with those that deal with the miraculous gift of speaking in tongues. Today we'll explore how the Bible uses this word glossa to refer not just to the physical organ, but also to different languages or dialects, which is vital to understanding the events in Acts 2. The event in Acts 2. Let's turn our attention to Acts chapter 2, verse 4, which says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here, the word tongues is translated from glossa. The context reveals that this miraculous event occurred on the day of Pentecost when the disciples were gathered together. The Holy Spirit filled them and they began to speak in different tongues. But what does this mean? Were they simply making unintelligible sounds, or was something deeper happening? The miracle of languages. To answer this, we need to look at the following verses. Acts chapter 2, verse 5 says, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. These verses set the stage, showing that Jerusalem was filled with people from various nations, all speaking different languages. Acts chapter 2, verse 6 continues. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Notice the word language here. The people were not just hearing noise. They were hearing their own native languages being spoken. Acts chapter 2, verses 7 to 8 read. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look! Are not all these who speak to dealings? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? This is where the miracle lies. The disciples, who were Gileans and presumably spoke Aramaic, were now speaking in languages they had never learned. The people from different nations, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and others, were astonished because they could understand what the disciples were saying in their own languages the purpose of the miracle. So why did this miracle happen? Why did the Holy Spirit enable the disciples to speak in different languages? Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 11, gives us the answer. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. The purpose was clear. It was to glorify God and to proclaim his mighty works to a diverse group of people the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to bridge of the language bearers that divided the people by uniting them in the message of God's greatness and the good news of Jesus Christ. This event on the day of Pentecost was not just a random display of supernatural power of the purposeful act of God. By enabling the disciples to apply them in different languages, the Holy Spirit demonstrated that the message of the gospel was for all people, regardless of their nationality or language. The miracle of tongues reminds us that God's love transcends all human barriers. It shows us that when the Holy Spirit is at work, even the things that seem impossible, like speaking a language you've never learned, can become a reality. As we reflect on this miracle, that the same Holy Spirit 
who empowered the disciples is still at work today. And may we be open to his leading and be used by him to proclaim the wonderful works of God to everyone we encounter, no matter who they are or where they come from. Amen.